All right, welcome everybody to Simply Cyber, the YouTube channel designed to help you make and take a cybersecurity career further, faster. I am very, very excited about today's show. We always get questions on the channel and on stream about, uh, you know, I work in finance, I work in HR, I work in the music industry. How can I possibly get into cybersecurity? Is it even possible, right? So we're going to be answering that question today with an expert who's in the industry, a great person, a friend of the community, and a professional hacker from a unconventional background. So we're going to go into how Ryan uh, made that transition, some of the pitfalls he encountered, and some of the projects that he's working on. I do want to point out, if you're not a subscriber of Simply Cyber, consider doing it because we actually have a lot of live streams coming up. We have produced shows on Monday, but the live streams are coming up. Uh, we had Heath Adams this uh, past week. Um, we're actually getting some really, really uh, exciting guests coming up. So I don't want you to miss any of that. So consider doing that. Um, also, thank you for being here. Absolutely, right? You guys are the reason that I do this. Um, if the community wasn't part of it, I probably would stop doing it because I don't really want to hear myself talk. I just want to get this knowledge out there. And you all seem very, very um, reciprocating uh, with your, your kindness and uh, your generosity. So thank you so much for being here live or on stream. If you are live, uh, we're trying something kind of new today. Uh, if you've been a friend of the show for a while, we typically take questions in chat and feel free to drop them in chat. That That is cool. But you'll notice that Nightbot, one, one of my automated bots, is actually dropping a link to a form that you can, it's like a Google form. You can just type it in, uh, you, what your question is. And I've actually got like a little thing over here that's automated, that's queuing up the questions because I have, I have a challenge sometimes trying to weed through the, uh, some of the commentary to find the questions that you guys want. And you guys didn't uh, jump into the live stream to watch me fumble about with comments and stuff like that. So I'm trying it out. If it doesn't work, we'll abandon it. And if it does, we'll keep doing it, right? All right. So, uh, oh, also we are going to be uh, raffling off two one month subscriptions to try Hack Me, uh, a platform that's awesome for developing your offensive security skills. And I thought with Ryan coming on that we uh, would be, it would be totally appropriate to give away free uh, uh, opportunities for developing those raw red skills. All right, so let's bring Ryan into the, uh, into the main stage here. And let me just introduce him, okay? Ryan is a freshly minted cybersecurity professional who only pivoted into cybersecurity last year in August. Okay, so we're talking 13 months, people. So you can move quickly. You can move into the industry. The only obstacle is really making the commitment, driving it, being proactive, having that, having that uh, you know, determination, okay? When COVID put an end to 25 years in the music industry, 25 years, people, he decided he wasn't going to let something as insignificant as a global apocalypse and the sudden end to the only thing he thought he knew how to do, get him down. Love this man's optimism. <clears throat> 18 months later, and Ryan works as a security engineer for a great company in the States, runs his own privacy consultancy company, Smart Cyber Solutions, has published five hacker magazines, was Attack IQ's Defender of the Month, co-hosted an amazing podcast, and he's just getting warmed up. I am super, super excited to bring on stage and just be, be a part of uh, the community with uh, Ryan Williams. Ryan, thank you for Good being morning. here. Good morning. How you going, man? Thanks for having me on. Yeah, it's very absolutely. early over here, mate. Very, very early. <laughs> yeah, I know. I appreciate that. So Ryan is coming to us live from, I believe, Brisbane, Australia. Is that is That's that correct, accurate? Man. Yeah, yeah so he's going to have some funny uh, oi, oi, oi's and uh, uh, Georgie pies and stuff, <laughs> right? I, I don't even know if that's politically incorrect, honestly, Ryan. But um, we, we, don't, we don't mind down here. Okay. okay. Very, very cool. All right. So again, if you got questions for Ryan, as we go through, drop them in there. But, you know, I guess really the big question, Ryan, as we kind of come into this is how did you even pick cybersecurity, right? Like you're, you're a DJ, you're making music, <laughs> everything goes to hell and you decide cybersecurity. So I'm really interested on how that came to be. And then what were your initial kind of steps in order to, to make that first, get the momentum going? Well, it wasn't it wasn't really an instantaneous thing. Um, uh, I was we were doing the drivers party at the Formula One, and um, uh, basically the night that that party ended, uh, we got a call saying everything was shut down, and that was it. That was it for my for music industry work. So I think it took me about two to three months to kind of figure that the, the cybersecurity was the way to go. Like I've 
always been into computers. My dad got me into them when I was pretty young, five or six. I wrote my first program on Commodore 64. Um, nice. And just from there, like it was always a passion in the background and having an old man in telecommunications uh, gave me exposure to, uh, you know, we had a modem at home and then I don't know how I got my hands on it, but I got a, ended up getting a war dialing app. And it was just, we had a second line and I was just firing out, for, like firing out calls, firing out calls. And I came across a bulletin board on the Gold Coast and uh, it all kind of kicked off from there when I was about 10, 10 or 11. So um, it's, it's always kind of floated in the background. And so when the music thing finished, it just seemed, I actually don't know why I didn't think of it sooner, but it just was the logical choice. And an ad came on TV about um, uh, the government paying for cybersecurity courses. Mm -hmm. And I signed up the next day and was off and racing. Oh, interesting. So the Australian government was paying for cybersecurity courses. What year was this? Uh, last year, 2020. Oh, 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 of course, of course. I'm thinking you're talking about when yeah. you were 10. I'm like, what the hell? Yeah. Like no, cybersecurity was wasn't even a thing. <laughs> so, so, so interesting. So uh, was there any, um, I'm actually kind of curious because, you know, there's a lot of education opportunities that we have available to us as a community. And some of yeah. it's uh, U.S. government based, but they're kind of niche and stuff like that. Was this what? Was, what kind of training was this, and what was the obligation to the Australian government? Um, it was a, it's a certificate four, which is uh, it's 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 kind of it's very entry level. It's, it was put together by cybersecurity experts, um, uh, and it kind of co covers the just the basics of everything. You know, like it's a little bit of this, a little bit of that. It kind of gives you just like a, a uh, I guess you would cons. Uh, it's like a really, really simple CompTIA network plus, like mm -hmm. a simplified version of that. But um, the problem was there's 18,000 people coming out at the end of it. And about two months into the course, I realized that, you know, to actually, even though there's massive cybersecurity gaps, even stand out amongst those 18,000 people, plus the people coming out of university and people already in the industry that I had to do a hell of a lot more to uh, basically make my way. So I just got into it, man. Yeah. So that, that's, that is a really interesting observation that a lot of people don't make uh, until they start trying to get a job. And then they realize that there's a uh, saturation in the market, even though there's like so many unfilled jobs, right? That, that we're not even going to go into that, that whole uh, scenario right now. But so, okay. So you're going through this program, uh, like yep. so many people, right? Whether it's a boot camp for a cert or whether it's a four-year degree, whatever. So what, what was, uh, what were the extra things that you did? What, you know, what kind of, and, and I'd be curious if you did any extra things that actually did not pay dividends or were kind of a dead end. Okay. Oh, they have heaps of those. Um, <laughs> so, um, it started off, the first one was probably the, uh, Netacad, the, the Cisco trade, free Cisco training. Mm -hmm. And, um, from there I just started smashing through that and decided to look for some more stuff. I think I went to, I can't remember where I went after that, um, might have even been actually i'm not sure what was next i think i think it might have been pen tester lab maybe i, I crossed and um i started doing like their linux linux uh like getting, you know, getting to know linux course and all that sort of stuff um and it was well i can't think what else i did actually um yeah, sorry, mine's gone. No, no, that's good. Um, it's good. So, what was I guess besides the the program from the Aussies? What was the yeah. one thing that you did that you think had the most impact and really would like well, set you apart from that eighteen thousand people you just mentioned? Um, I think the one got to be Attack IQ, man. It's the interesting. I, I, don't, I don't even know how I came across it initially, but um, they I think they were just it was about a probably around November or something like this. I came across um their. Uh, foundations of Mitre Attack. Uh -huh. it, at, at, the, at that point, I, I, I'd basically done some basic networking stuff and things like that. And it just uh -huh. blew my mind. Like this, this, this whole framework of like the, the, the TTPs and all that sort of stuff and like, like adversaries and how it all worked and like the, 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 just the, this whole world of like threat intelligence that I had no idea existed. And it was really, really exciting for me. And I just, started eating up the courses like the um, breach and attack simulation, um, easy, the easy framework. And just, as soon I couldn't, as fast as they could pump them out, I, I did them in. And it, yeah. Attack, and and, and actually, I'm going to pull it, I'm going to pull it up right now, actually. Right. So this is, this is it right here. Right. Is this what you're yeah. talking about? That's the one. Yeah. The, the so Academy. Yeah. yeah. And, and this is all, um, I, you know, we, we don't have an affiliation with uh, MITRE attack or the attack IQ 
uh, Academy, but this is free learning as far as I'm aware. Right. Uh, it, Ryan. And the, the best, okay. I, I go on about these guys all the time. I'm the biggest fanboy, but um, <laughs> their, their training is actually training. It's, it's not, they like this time, maybe a tiny little bit about them trying to sell their product or they're talking about their platform, but it is real, real world learning like it's stuff that you can apply to anything anywhere it's not just about attack iq's product or it's and it's offered for free and the, the quality of it's next level man and basically that that the momentum i got from doing the attack iq just like sent me skyrocketing basically from there i went on to um doing this stuff with the cyber mentor um mm -hmm. what else did I do? um oh a whole heap of us um uh Department of Homeland certificates, they were fun. Like, yeah. I, just, I became a cert whore. I just needed more and more and more. <laughs> yeah. I, and I, I feel like a lot of people when they're in their you know younger part of their career, e even if you're rebooting what your career is, uh, yeah. go for the certs because uh, A, it's education and B, it, it's it's something you can put on the resume, right? I feel like when you're yeah. when you're starting your cybersecurity journey, you look at your resume and it feels empty or void of any type of like impact. So you you start getting those certs, and, and there's nothing wrong with that, absolutely. But I would agree with you 100 percent on um, Cyber Mentor stuff. Um, and we had him on stream last week, looking yeah, at what they're doing. Right. They, they, yeah, they've added so much more uh, education. To, to their uh, platform and stuff like that. So, so that's cool. So uh, Ryan, are you okay if we, if we mix in questions from the audience also? Yeah, man, go for it. Okay. Sure. It, lo it looks like no one's interested in using my form, which, which is fine, but we'll take them right for the thing. <laughs> so Isaac asked a question here and we, we get this question quite a bit. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm older, whatever that means, right? You're 40, you're 50, you're 60, whatever it is. What are your chances of getting a job in cyber or cloud? I've got some thoughts on this. Uh, and, he, and by the way, he says he's got some advanced degrees, uh, diploma. He's got networking experience, uh, which which just adds to your ability, right? But I don't think it's a requirement um, to go in. But so I guess, Ryan, what are your thoughts when someone approaches you and says, "Hey, I'm I, I'm too old." Am I? There's no such thing. Absolutely no such thing. If you if you if you want it, just go for it. Like. It's just about being tenacious and like, there's got so many knockbacks, man. You just, like that was probably the, the best thing that came across from the music industry was having a real thick skin. Um, mm. you know, there's always haters, hate to hate, but uh, um, just do it. Don't care what anyone else says. Like it's just, it's just run your own race. And that's, that's all you can do. Like 50 is nothing. Like I'm so close to 50. It hurts, but uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I would, I would agree a hundred percent. A couple of things that I'd like to point out, Isaac, one, Cloud, like cloud's been around for like, let's say a decade, but like cloud, you know, securing the cloud, understanding what cloud is, a lot of businesses are moving into the cloud. So like there's an actual adoption there where businesses are going to fund security practitioners. That's relatively new. I have 17 years in the industry. Um, I've had to learn cloud myself, right? So it, it, it's kind of a fresh Think of it as like a fresh crop of strawberries that you just stumbled on into the in the forest, right? Like no one's really picked these things yet. So I don't like personally, I I hire people, right, to to work on my information security team. I don't care if you're 170 years old. If you can help me secure my cloud, then you're hired. Like that's I that, I need the capability. I don't need your age. Like with all due respect, like that's great. Like it's great that you're 18, or it's great that you're 50. Can you do what I need, right? And, and that's, that's how I've always felt about it. Um, that's why like with resumes, I don't really ever care about, um, well, I mean, yeah, like, well, the name, like, you know, I need to know the name so I know who I'm talking to, but like the gender, where they're coming from, <laughs> nationality, all that stuff. It doesn't matter. What I need is like, what's listed on this resume. Are they communicating that they can do what I need done? Yeah. Right. And then, of course, we can get into a whole mix of things about the resume or excuse me, the job posting being generic and not really applied to like what I need hired and stuff like that. But um, yeah. So anyways. Oh, yeah. Here's the link, Josh. Thank Josh threw it out there so other people can get into that. I totally forgot. Uh, I'm just yeah. like showing people something and then not making it available to them. Um, they have a community as well called Informed Defenders. When you do the Attack IQ courses, it's just everyone who basically does the attack IQ learning and um, they have challenges and stuff like on there, on there that are pretty fun as well. Like just keeps it interesting. You meet some interesting people, make some good connections. So yeah, it's really good. But um, what I was going to say about the certificate certification thing, mm -hmm. I didn't pay for many or actually nearly any. Um, 
the comp, the net plus, sec plus, pentester plus, I basically just studied the material and then did the practice test to prove competency to myself and then moved on to the next one. So mm -hmm. basically saving my money to do the OSCP, which is super expensive now. But um, uh, you don't have to like, you don't have to have those little pieces of paper. If you've got a GitHub or you show, uh, I don't know, an interest, in, an interest in what you're doing. Like you're actually out there com contributing to the community, making real connections, not just like being a sycophant and like following people and saying how that's wonderful their stuff is, but actually contributing to the community. It's, um, mm -hmm. I think that's, that's better than any certification you can get. Well, maybe not all, but yeah. No. And you actually, that's a really, really good point. Um, you know, I, I recently, because, because of cloud, because I needed to get, I need to get smart on Azure basically is the takeaway. Um, I started doing all the free Microsoft training uh, and it's all free because they want people skilled up on their platform. So it gets uh, market adoption, but, um, but they have certi certi cert certifications with each of those. And I actually thought to myself, like, I don't want to get these certs. Um, the, the AZ 500 is one that I might get, but that's kind of like the, the climax of like what a security engineer would be going for. And yeah. like the, the previous ones are good if you're, if, if you're kind of newer in the industry, but like, like your yeah. points is saying getting that education. And again, it's really, I've been dealing with a lot of resumes lately. Like it's really about effectively communicating your ability to have experienced that work and have. Uh, you know, like learn from the mistakes and encountered some of those obstacles that anyone would encounter if they actually had done the work. Like, I, like to me, actually, I don't know, Ryan, how you feel about this, but like a descriptive bullet of your capability is in, in like Azure is more yeah. valuable than saying that you're a AZ 900 certified, yeah. right? Because because you, you can brain dump it and stuff like that. Although, although I will say uh, certifications like the PNPT, uh, to name one from... Oh. Uh, you know, that is practical, practical based, right? You can't brain dump yeah. that one. You know, you and basically. it's affordable. It's affordable. This is like. Yeah, it really the, is. A couple hundred bucks. Yeah. Like uh, when you're coming into the industry, there's, okay, the, the biggest challenges are I can coming in, in, into the industry is one, like, especially if you're coming from a place where either you're a student or you've got no work or there's so many different challenges. Um, well, COVID's affected your life having a couple of grand to throw away on a certification just isn't, isn't an option for everyone. So, um, you know, $10,000 for a SANS, SANS course, um, about $2,000. This is Australian dollars, by the way, which aren't worth anything these days, but um, $2,000 for OSCP. Um, uh, you know, it's to have something like the PNPT come out that actually it shows you have actual practical experience. It's such a godsend. It's so good. Such a good thing he's doing. Yeah. Yeah. And I, you know, the OSCP is a golden ticket right now, but I, I do have, uh, um, not faith, but like, I, I, I predict that the PNPT will get more market traction and begin to challenge yeah. those. Uh, also, uh, Josh is pointing out the EJPT is only $200 us. Um, yeah. if you're looking for that more entry level pen tester cert, um, because OSCP and PNPT are, uh, like I would say like mid-level, you know, competent yeah. practitioner you can run your own engagement kind of thing yeah. um so so here's a really good question um you know you said ryan contribute to the community yep. what does that what does that mean give give us some yeah. actionable takeaways contributing to the community um i don't know like everyone's like even if you're just starting out there's always someone just below you you know like reach out help someone pay it forward uh you know start a magazine like if you want to get experience Go to your local community center and you know secure their secure their network. Um, like don't donate your time. There's there's no there's like you can do this stuff for free. You can put it on your resume if you need to. Um, and it just builds community. Like the way I got the job that I had now is just through networking, meeting good people and doing good things. Like I um I Dave, my boss, hit me up um, months before he hired me and asked me if I knew anyone good for to fill a certain role and that worked out for him. And then a couple of months later, he came back and offered me a role. So mm -hmm. it's just, uh, I guess just be a good person. Yeah. Really do good don't, things. Don't be, a, don't be a, I don't know if you can swear on this show, but it don't be a tool. <laughs> that tool does uh, not hit a block yeah. word. So that's good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I agree. And John, I would also say uh, contributing to the community can be, you know, joining a discord and, and, you know, being supportive 
doing, you know, um, you know, participating in, in situations like this. I, I saw, I, I chimed on this uh, a couple live streams ago, but thinking outside the box too, like there's a guy on my discord server, Pete McKinnon. He asked me, Hey, can I have like a little channel in the discord? Because I want to learn Python programming. And I thought it would be interesting if I posted like a, basically a challenge of the day that's designed for like, you know, beginner level Python programmers, your basic that's computer cool. science challenge, right? Like here's a string, yeah. uh, you know, find the largest palindrome inside of it or something like that. And I said, sure. So every day he posts a challenge, he solves it, and then he puts the solution behind a um, like a like a, well, a, spo a spoiler thing. Yeah. yeah. And I, I don't know what kind of uh, engagement he's got, but it's it's really cool. I've gone in and done a couple challenges like it and, and he's doing it for himself. But at the same time, yeah. it, it it breeds a sense of community and you're helping someone else who might not even think where the he where do I start? How do I get? into python right or do i even need python hey pete why are you learning like boom now you got a connection you know there you go down the road yeah, that, that just like that's such a good thing like just any content you put online like that's about your learning or things that you have learned like you might not know it, but that could help someone out like someone searching and they find your like the way that you solved solved the problem or the way you did it, like you, you post a walkthrough for hack the box and um you know someone's stuck and they find your thing that, that that's a little bit of light that you've just given to that person like Oh. Yeah, Haunted Hacker talks ah, about doing it. Good afternoon. <laughs> yep. So t I guess Haunted Hacker, uh, which is your, you're affiliated with Haunted Hacker. Maybe after we talk about the attack demos and the walkthroughs as a way of contributing to the community, maybe we could talk a little yep. bit about Haunted Hacker. Not a problem. Yeah. So you guys do attack demos and walkthroughs? Like for, for who? Sorry, who? who well, attack oh, I'm sorry. Like, oh. so this is Haunted Hacker's YouTube account saying yeah. that they do attack demos and walkthroughs. I just assumed that you were associated with it and that you knew what this was referring to. I um, invite people to get to help get jobs, do attack demos and walkthroughs. Yeah. Do you guys do like uh, attack demos and walkthroughs, like offensive security oh. kind of demonstrations? Uh, we, oh, my, Mike's demonstrated heaps of good attacks um, on previous podcasts, but um. I'm not sure what he's talking about with the walkthroughs, though. But we are maybe in the Horton Hacker magazine. We've had heaps of good walkthroughs in the magazine. But, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So let's that talk about that because that's that's definitely a way that you have contributed. And I like if you guys haven't seen <coughs> the Haunted Hacker magazine while while Ryan's talking about it, I'm going to try to Google it and find it. Like it is, yeah. it is very classy. It's very uh, very good. You know what it reminds me of? I don't know if they had 2600 uh, in Australia. Yeah, the yeah, magazine yeah yeah but it reminds me of that it's got that like feel of it that kind of like gorilla feel to it you know what i mean and not that the was, gorilla on the cover but like you know what i mean like yeah gr the gorilla gr journalism yeah. so yeah. so what talk, tell, talk to us about haunted hacker magazine um basically uh my one day in the chat mike was talking about doing this newsletter um just with uh you know uh just tech news basically hacker news and um we came up with this, uh, this little document, and I thought I suggested we should do a magazine. And uh, Mike's got, yeah, yeah, I'd love to do that. That'd be great. And ten days later, we had a magazine. Um, basically, got con contrib uh, contributors from the Haunted Hacker group, uh, a couple of external ones, and just threw it together. And that was the very first Haunted Hacker magazine. Um, and from since then, we've had five editions, I think. They were they were kind of all over the world to start with, but um, we brought, we brought it back together and there's going to be a, a massive issue for the one-year anniversary of Haunted Hacker on, in October, which will be great. But um, yeah, it was just a... I guess it was just a really good way to like, you know, get uh, give people a voice who maybe didn't have one or were too shy to speak out. Like what, some people are more more comfortable like writing out their, you know, their message or their, what their, their views are. So... It kind of gave the people who were a bit in the shadows a voice as well, which was kind of nice, I think. Yeah, I yeah that that is interesting. I didn't realize who all was your authors uh, of the magazine. I, I know that uh, you know Cyber Supply Drop got uh, a late ad on the back yeah. page of that most recent yeah. one. Congrat, you know, good for Josh and the Cyber Supply Drop. Oh, by the way, who is providing the raffle giveaway today? So uh, <laughs> oh, nice one, Josh. Yeah, 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 nice tie in there. Uh, but but it but it is really cool because again we're talking about it, it all it all sounds like different things but it all circles around the same kind of central core networking community 
uh, being a good person really and uh, paying it forward. And it's cool that you guys are extending that capability and that option to, or that opportunity to the, uh, the cybersecurity community to be able to contribute and make it so, so good. It makes a lot more sense because it's like 75 pages long. And I was like, when did they have time to make this? This thing is huge. <laughs> um, yeah, man, the Horn okay. So in all the Hornet hacker community and, and Mike, uh, are also, he, they're pretty much single handedly responsible for the place that I'm at now. Like, uh, just I don't even know why Mike even kind of reached out, but uh, I've discovered his, uh, the Haunted Hacker podcast in episode six. It was about SIGINT, and I and it just blew my mind this world of RF. And I was just I was hooked, and basically, I just started harassing him, ask, asking him questions. And uh, um, he told me about this community he had, and next thing you know, it where I'm putting paste ups on the street of Melbourne, you know, to to get the message out there, and yeah, it's just such a the community is so it's not like the old hacker communities where it's like everyone's burning everyone and everyone's more elite. It's mm -hmm. actually supportive. Like you go in there, there's a you have a question, and people will help you find an answer. And if they don't have the answer, they'll find someone who does. Like huge like repository of like information on all like offensive, defensive, you know, cooking even you know like. Mental health, we cover it covers everything in there. It's it's a really healthy, holistic kind of place. And this is the server, the Discord server. This is the Discord server, and then from that Discord server, that's where the magazine was born. That's where so many different ideas have like spawned out of it. And you know, it's it's good. Mike's it's it's Mike's Mike's thing. He started with uh, another Mike, his roommate, and um, basically that it's like an incubator for for I guess the next generation of cybersecurity professionals and some of the older guys as well. I love it. If someone could, uh, I guess I can't copy, I can't copy and paste the links out of chat. Unfortunately, uh, maybe I'll do that later, but if someone could <laughs> drop a discord server invite to the haunted hacker server, I'm not a member and I would like to be, um, if, unless it's like, well, you just said it, it's not elite and exclusive. Uh, so, uh, if someone well, they, could let, do they that, let me in, I'm Australian. They let, so they let anyone in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, oh! It's not an Australian operation. I thought Hunter no, 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 no. was Australian. No, 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 not at all. Not at all. No. Interesting. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a blow in. I, I just, it's, it's Mike's baby, and um, yeah, we just, he just got basically gave me the rope and said, run with it. So yeah. So oh, that, very that's cool. How, he, oh, it was so good. But that's how Hunter, it was kind of like that to start with. Like we just, if anyone had ideas, we just ran with it, and it was good. It was good fun. So, all right, I'm 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 bringing the uh, the magazine up. Uh, my mods, Josh, <laughs> has has conveniently hooked me up here with uh, this because I want people to see this because I think it is really really good. He dropped the link in chat, uh, yeah. but I want people to see it so you can really appreciate it. Okay, so this is this is the the website you'll get when you go there. How do I click in here, man? Ugh. I wanted I was really hoping to be able to get the sweet like the sweet flipping of the okay. pages. Ah, uh, whatever. Never mind. All right. Well, this is where you got to go to get it, people. Can I can I type in the chat? No. Uh, you can type no. in chat, but no, you won't you won't be able to maneuver this uh, this page here. But that's okay. No big deal. Yeah. Um. Oh, and I'm getting the Discord uh, server invite over on Discord of places, so that's good. So <laughs> let let's bring it back to um. I, I want to talk about two things, uh, and then we can take take some questions and uh, do the raffle yeah. and stuff like that, but. You know, so we're talking about unconventional paths. So, yeah. you know, from your experience, I mean, you've been in the community for a year. You are, you, you're you doing, a, you know, like, I don't want to say aggressive things, but you're doing a lot of things in order to accelerate your your time from where you were to where you want to be, right? Yeah. I, I, I think, would imagine. I, yeah, go ahead. I think that it's, um, it's not actually from where I am to where I want, like, I, I think it's from being in the music industry. Like, I don't really have a career career it's like a it's like a life like cybersecurity is now my life choice it's like the you know it's not just a job it's my passion it's everything mm -hmm. that i do so mm -hmm. the the output of the things i do isn't to achieve a goal it's just that's what my output is and um which is a, can be a, it's a blessing and a curse i guess but um but uh i think because I don't, I don't even know where that what the end point is at this this stage but i'm um, all I know is that I'm loving this, this industry. Like there's more genuine, helpful people in cybersecurity than in any other industry I've been in. Like music was full of like narcissists and sycophants and, and cybersecurity is great, man. There's a lot, there's some, you know, 
a couple of assholes here and there, but yeah, yeah, most, you could have you, there's some toxicity, but I will say I, I have found the community be almost self policing, right? Like yeah. I don't know if you've noticed that as well, but there's a lot of self policing. There's a lot of accountability where people are held accountable. Uh, yeah. Sometimes you see some some blow ups on. I mean, just look at um, EC Council and the whole yeah. plagiarism thing. I mean, they didn't get yeah. away with that. That was like front yeah. and center. Like th we're going to hold you accountable. So uh, it's just another great thing. And I'm 100% with you, Ryan. Uh, cybersecurity yeah. is is my lifestyle. I, I do it for fun. YouTube, right? I do it for professional. I talk about it. My wife jokes. <laughs> uh, she's not in the industry, but she jokes that she could sit for the CISP today and, and get it, <laughs> you know? <laughs> So, so what type of, um, so be an offensive security uh, practitioner, you know, what are you, yeah. like, what are you, what are you doing to like uh, refine your skills or what are you, like, what are you gravitating towards? Like, are you starting to specialize or are you just taking whatever comes? But you called me a professional hacker at the start, which I thought was very nice. And I'm still an amateur. I'm still, still new. Like there is so much that I don't know, like, but that's, mm -hmm. that's the thing. That's what I love about it. every day. Even if I did, even if I was, had been in the industry 20 years tomorrow, there's going to be something new that I don't know. And that's, so, that's so exciting for me. Like that, that there's always that thing to strive for. But um, yeah, at the moment I'm just, I'm smashing, try hack me, uh, hack the box, doing um, uh, some Voln hub stuff just to try and get my skills up to us, uh, do the OSCP. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, just generalist at the moment, I'm playing around with Terraform a bit as well to like for spinning up offensive infrastructure and what else? Yeah. That's, so, so when you say Terraform, just uh, real quick, because a lot of the things that you just mentioned are fairly, uh, a lot of people in the community know about it. But as far as Terraform, are you saying that you're going to go on an engagement and not just having your laptop with Cali, but having like an no. entire infrastructure for phishing and landing pages and all that stuff? Yeah. You have a, I mean, can you kind of elaborate how you're, how you're building this? Well, I mean, we don't have to get super technical because we're not going to have. Oh, trust me, I won't. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, um. Ter Terraform, um, it's infrastructure as code, and basically you write scripts that basically spin up servers on different providers, um, and then along with Ansible or Puppet, something like this, it actually um, pr provisions those as different types of servers. So you can have your your, your redirectors or your your phishing servers and things like that. So rather than just having your laptop, you've got a whole like whole basically offensive in infrastructure to use, and then. Um, the good thing about Terraform is you can have it so if one of your, just say a redirector gets, um, you know, the blue team spots it, it can get destroyed and then spun up straight away. Straight away. There's no, there's no messing about. You know, it's oh, it's, it's almost unfair. Off. It's like it's like bringing a machine gun to a knife fight. Yeah, <laughs> good stuff. They're, I like those kind of odds. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. I love it. So, uh, while, while some more questions queue up, and we've got one. Thank you, uh, Rye Wensky, who's used the form, and it pops up over here. So I'm like, I'm loving the automation. Uh, we'll we'll ask his question uh, in a second. But are you good if we do a uh, giveaway, Ryan? Yeah, man, sounds good. All right, let's let's do this. All right, people, you know how this works. The hashtag is going to be hashtag uh, Ryan. But give me a second to activate this thing. Uh, hashtag Ryan. Okay, so to enter, just type hashtag Ryan in the comments and you'll get entered to win a one month subscription to Try Hack Me, the same platform that Ryan is pounding on every single day, according to him, top, minutes ago. Yeah, yeah, so uh, I'm in top 4% at the moment, which isn't that impressive. That's like, like 25,407. So it sounds impressive, but it's not really. <laughs> uh, well, you know, I'll still put it, still put it on the resume and enjoy it, right? So, uh, so while that, while those, uh, uh, queue up, we've got 50 people in the audience right now. And I know yeah, everybody awesome. wants a free month of try hack me and we're picking two winners people because that's what simply cyber does. We, it's all about the people. So, um, Ryan, there's a question oh. from Ryan Wensky, uh, in, yep. in chat here. And he wants to know if you're taking part in the down under CTF. You know, it. for okay. sure. Yeah, it should be. So, um, I, it was my. It was the first CTF I ever went in the last year, and I did terribly. I, I won't tell you how badly, but really bad, like really bad. So, um, yeah, I'm hoping to beat my score of six from last time. <laughs> nice, dude. I love it. And, and this is a pretty large CTF. Like, is this an Australian yeah, thing? I mean, name yeah, down on Yeah. 
yeah, it's, it's pretty good. It's a pretty big one. Um, I don't actually rec- like recall how many teams or anything was in it last year. I um about out. I think it was Sunday morning when I just it was just I was embarrassed at my uh, uh, attempt. But um, yes, I'm this year I'm going to redeem myself. But I think it's open to every, everyone uh, worldwide. I'm pretty sure. Um, I think registration's still open. You know, all right. Come and play with the Aussies. Where well, you know. I like it. I like it. I I do have a good friend who lives in Brisbane, so I know a little bit about the, uh, um, oh, shit. Well, never mind. I I, I had a couple of those, like, uh, like terms that y'all throw around down there, but I, I, it's, uh, I can't think of it right now. I, I, this is the second week in a row where I've just like had like a brain melt (laughs) live on stream. I couldn't think of John Strand's name of all people the other day. I know. (laughs) Embarrassing. (laughs) Okay, so let's uh, get them in, people. 23 people have entered. I know a lot of people, not a lot, but some people already have access to try Hack Me, et cetera. I'm going to be drawing this in just a minute, okay? So let's. Now, if actually, anyone's interested, well, sorry, if anyone's interested go, in that, the down under CTF and aren't confident enough maybe to go in it or and just want to see what it's about, a guy, DC Cybersec, is, um, uh, he streams the, them doing it live. And it, it's a, it, man, it's a really good, really good show. And he's a great hacker too. So. Nice. And uh, Rywenski, thanks for uh, using the, 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 the question form. And he says it starts in under 12 hours. Um, Josh is actually mentioning that I uh, asked down under CTF is one of the largest CTFs. Uh, I assume he means globally. Um, so very, very cool. Nice. You can't, can't beat yourself up too hard, um, Brian, for not placing too well if it's one of the biggest ones. All right, so it looks like we got one more person, so I think we're ready to draw. You ready? I'm ready, mate. All right, let's do it. Oh, I see a couple people in here. Regulars of Simply Cyber. I'd love to see that. All right. Ooh, Marco. Nice job, Marco. All right, so Marco wins one of them. And we'll we'll do another one. You ready? We got two, so we're pulling out all the stops. Marco and good luck, everybody. Good luck, everybody. Let's get it. Let's get it. Um, Looks like it's going to be Eric Hernandez. All right. All right, guys, just try to connect with me on um, LinkedIn after the show or tomorrow or something like that. And I'll get you the, um, I'll get you the, the, the codes so you can get into try hack me and start trying to take over uh, Ryan's place. (laughs) <laughs> Good. so so um we actually had some more questions in here uh raven yep. you know likes what you're saying about terraform i also like it even though it, it's like horrifying to me i'm not i'm i'm yep. more on the defensive i'm not on the red side so um yep. w- you know you have you come across any resources that are practical um, or effective the terraform.io site itself has some good introductory kind of things um i just went to github man there's some really really good stuff up in github but the Actually, it's kind of a good thing, I guess, but it's never exactly what you want. So it's, it's learning how to take the, this part from here and this part from here and put it together and actually have it work is, um, I found the best learning experience so far. Mm-hmm. Like, um, uh, who's good? I can't. Let me see if I got. Actually, no. I want to. Will I do that? Is uh, there a, is there a certain cloud provider that like is Terraform like a I, cloud specific? Like, is it AWS's thing or? It's, I think it goes across everything, AWS, uh, DigitalOcean, Azure, anything you want, really. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, it's, it's very versatile. And they, they have um, they have resources, like, from, uh, like, so many different, so many different companies. Like, it's, it's really quite good. It's um, well, quite good, actually, an understatement. Like, it's it's a pro tool, man. It's, like, if you're All serious right. about, if you're serious, check it out. Yeah, so it sounds like Terraform needs to be on your list if you're in the in the uh, pen testing career path, right? If if that's the yeah. uh, RGP R, RGP RPG character that you're trying to build out, like a uh, off yeah. offsec mage, uh, yeah. something. <laughs> so we got another question from the uh, the qu- the form over here. Uh, I'm still I'm still unsure if I want to keep doing this, but uh, Jermaine asks Ryan, uh, this is a really good question. How many hours were you dedicating a day? when you were oh. learning in the early days, what was your, what was your training regiment looking like? 26 or 27 hours. I reckon today. No, um, uh, it was, it was a lot. Um, um, uh, my missus barely saw me. Like I was, cause I was studying doing the course. Cause that was like, f- like full time, pretty much nine to five during the day. And then uh, but it was all re- remote. So as soon as that finished, I was on doing a- anything I could find any course I could find like, 
just devouring information. So probably 12, 12 hours a day, I guess, for uh, at least for the first six months. And then I probably backed off a little bit, maybe. Um, but then it, then it kind of was the balancing work stuff and the learning and then work stuff, learning in magazine and hoarded hackers. So, but I don't know. I guess it just depends. Like you get back what you put in. So if if you want it, you'll get it. You just have to, you know, it's, you just have to be dedicated. You just have to be willing to put that time in because there's no, there is no fast forward. Like there's, you can't skip around things. That's one of the things. Don't skip past something because it's hard or really dry because it will always bite you in the ass. Mm. Always. Um, just some i can't there's a few examples of things actually i'm not gonna go into it but um yeah just progress through like don't rush don't there's there there is no rush to get there you will get there but mm-hmm. um like skipping forwards like to stuff that you don't understand is uh yeah it's just you end up with thin knowledge and, and it'll, you'll come unstuck somewhere so that's my that's my biggest piece of advice yeah. in my yeah, that, I mean, I think that that's excellent advice, especially if you're getting frustrated with some of the the basic stuff, the fundamental stuff. You think you got it. You you yeah. you want. I don't want to say you want to cheat, right? Because that's not the right word. But you're you're frustrated with your progress, and you just want to get to where you need to be so you can get the job you want, or you can get whatever it is you need. And uh, I I agree with you a hundred percent. And when you say thin knowledge, if I can. Uh, uh, dig into that a little bit for people in the yeah. audience. What I think what Ryan is referring to or how I would describe it is you, you want to do like Kerberos roasting. So you watch a video on how to do it and then you set the lab up perfectly and then you execute it perfectly. And now you've done Kerber roasting and you feel like you got that and you, and you put it on your resume and stuff. And the reality is like that script won't work or the client is running, you know, a different windows OS or, like, or, you know, the AD is configured separate or it's multi-force yeah. or whatever, like whatever it is, it's not going to work. And and yeah. that's why tech demos fail all the time. But this is, this is what he's uh, referring to is like, if you don't understand the theory behind why the ticket granting service is screwed up and how you can take advantage of it, then you don't understand actually what's happening. You just understood how to follow a, a walkthrough, right? And the walkthrough just kind of gives you uh, awareness of what can be yeah. done. And, and, and the pieces involved, that, that's what I would say. So I would say it's not it's not wrong to jump ahead, but don't ever do it so you can just like run ahead and look at like look at the at the um, the vista and then run back and grab your bags and, and walk yeah. it on up the hill. Yeah, that's that's the only probably the only drawback I find about try hack me is that um, they have these bo- the, the, the learning boxes you go through and it's it kind of explains what's going on and like. Like you're saying, you're like you do do one on Kerber roasting, and or well, now I know Kerber roasting. You're on to the you're on to the next challenge. Like, um, this is why I find Pentest the lab so great. They're so comprehensive in everything they go through, and and the videos on there that, uh, like I, I actually did heaps of the the modules on there before even discovering the the little videos that you can watch, and they're just the 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 amount of information that's opened up that you know that you wouldn't have got anyway just reading stuff off the screen. Like it's. Mm-hmm. It gave me that extra level of understanding, and um, yeah, it's good, yeah, so, good to know everything. Yeah. So an- another question that I I have curious because you you said it already on stream that you know try hack me hack the box great ways to get practical skills. Do you feel that learning because the boxes are usually kind of pointed skills, right? Yeah. Do Do you find that working through those uh, equip you for professional competency for executing work? Oh. Yeah, or or uh, what do you what, what do you think about the the basically the education in the lab and how it translates to professional skill? Um, well, this is something I came across uh, quite recently. Like, uh, it's very like my motivation at the moment behind doing try hack me and hack box and stuff like that is one because it's it's infrastructure that's there, it's easy, but it's basically about muscle memory. It's about remembering that okay, this this tool is good for this, and this doesn't work for this, and why? Like, it's just those are the things that a person with years of experience has that I don't have. So um, the, the difference is massive, man. Like, like, like you do your reports and stuff or your walkthroughs on try hack me or things like that. And it is nothing in comparison to what you need to do for an actual pen test report or even for a vulnerability report for that matter. Like there's um, it's a big, big jump. And um, I think people need, if people could 
do one thing that's not not the actual technical side. That's the report writing and 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 knowing how to write good reports. Because if you can't get your message across from like the technical technical things that you've done to the, the stake like the stakeholders, then you may may as well have done nothing because you know it's it's pointless if you can't tell that ex, like express to them what it is that you've done to help. You know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So, are you are you developing and contributing boxes to Try Hack Me as well at this point? No, no, not at this point. No. Yeah, I've got enough on my plate already. Mate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, I'm not. Yeah, you are a busy fella. Um, but yeah, that's another thing. I know Josh does that as far as again contributing to the community, um, if you will. So I'd, I'd love uh, to do that. Actually, I haven't. I've I've haven't actually even looked into making my own boxes. But, uh, that would be really fun. I think. I think uh, um, Hacker are actually in the process of putting together a, a, a cyber range, I'm pretty sure, um, for uh, some things that are in the pipeline. So I might get an opportunity there. I like it. I like it. So, uh, Ryan, you know, as far as, um, you know, we've, we've kind of talked about an un- unconventional approach, uh, trans- yeah. transferring from music to um to cybersecurity. I, I'm curious, yeah. you know, for people who are coming from finance, coming from HR, coming from, you know, retail or whatever, you know, I guess, did you just, how did you find that the red side was what you wanted, right? Because sometimes we talk about oh, finding your passion niche, because, yeah, niche. like, yeah, like, how did you, we, we didn't really get into that. We just kind of talked briefly about a tighter, uh, a, t- a miter attack academy and stuff. Like, yeah. did um, you, yeah. That's the, I found that was the, Hardest question that no one tells you about. Like, you get have these people going, I want to get into cybersecurity. And then you have this guy going, Oh, yeah, what part of cybersecurity? And you're like, Oh, they're like deer in the headlights. It's um, that was the, the hardest thing to kind of figure out at the start because you've got this massive industry with all these different facets for all like all kinds of in- interests. And you have to kind of pick one and run with it. And um, finding that is really just the, that's the first step to to entering cybersecurity because it's you can't really be a generalist i guess there's just too much it's too much to know and um um finding out what that niche is can take time i guess like that's it try everything i guess like try a little bit of blue try a little bit of red try a little little bit of um you know grc whatever like whatever Mm -hmm. whatever kind of person you are i guess but the thing in the end even though it's a cybersecurity industry. It's still about people. So, like transferring those skills from the music industry, uh, like like organizing people or being able to, to like, you know, schedule and 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 achieve goals. Like these are things that transfer from any industry. So it's it's not that much different from anything else. It's just we get to do cool shit with computers, I guess. Yeah, and le- you get to lean into it. And uh, what I think, like one of the most inclusive parts of it, besides the community itself, is the accessibility to resources. And and so, like, you don't have to wait for someone to like give you like to use a music analogy. You don't have to wait for someone to give you studio time. You don't need to wait for someone yeah. to bring you backstage, right? Like, yeah. you can just get access to what you need and learn. There, there's yeah. there's there's some there's something going on in chat here with Carrie. Um, Carrie Chison, and I just want to bring it up really quick. So she was, she was saying that uh, you know, just real quick, that the whole thread is around Carrie um, not sure how to get access to some of these resources, maybe priced out, and not sure that cybersecurity is for her. Now, this isn't related to you, Ryan, but she's she's yep. coming from retail, unconventional yep. path, and I just want to like shout out to Carrie that there are so many options. We're talking about them on the channel. Uh, all the time. We're talking about them in this live stream. This is, yep. I wasn't going to plug this, but this is my website, simplycyber.io. You should, and if you, you, should, you should plug it because it's awesome, man. Like, oh, I've pushed so many links from that place. My God. <laughs> I appreciate it. So right here, Carrie, on the top is this free resources uh, section. And I'm telling you, like, you see how small this, this, this nav button is over here? That indicates how big the page is. There is you know, probably three, four, five hundred um, things here, okay, including resume templates and and a resignation template. Since I had to use that not too long ago, so I figured I'd share that with the community. <laughs> um, but yeah, so please, Carrie. Um, you know, I, I love cybersecurity so much. I want so many people to experience the pleasure and the satisfaction that I have had because of this industry. That 
Um, if anyone, you know, if you decide it's not for you, then it's not for you. But if it's because you don't feel like you have access to resources to develop yourself professionally, um, please take advantage of these resources because they're there for, for you and for everybody else who wants to make the, the commitment to get into the field. You, you do need to be prepared, though, for disappointments because it's, I won't say, actually, I will say, it's cutthroat. It's, there's like this, the cyber skills gap, I'm not, we're not going to, it's in the middle. So all these the entry level positions, there's so many people going for them. And there's so many people who are hungry. Like you need to just want it more than the guy next to you or girl or neutral, you know? So, yeah. And, yeah. And you're hundred percent right. And Jess has actually chimed in on this too. You know, it, you can do it. Anyone can do it, but it takes work. Right. And, and yeah. that's at the end of the day, it takes work. I mean, uh, Ryan was going buck wild with like, you know, 10, 12 hour days. Right. So that, that I'd say that's more on the aggressive side, but it, it can be done. If you're doing like a one hour a weekend, you know, that, that might be, uh, it might take you a little while to get there. Right. Cause you got to have that memory uh, or the, the knowledge and then apply it and then rinse and recycle. Uh, another thing we kind of talked about this already. You, you said it that you opted into cybersecurity as a lifestyle, but yeah. one thing that I tell a lot of people, and it's kind of tricky to define, is that I am of the camp that cybersecurity as a career is a lifestyle. It's not really a nine to five punch in. You can do it that way, but you're not going to really excel or, <clears throat> or promote and stuff like that. And the reason is, is because the tools change constantly. I just found out about Terraform live yeah. because of Ryan, right? The tools change constantly. The threat actors change constantly. The motivations change. The playing field is very fluid, right? It's very dynamic. And in order for me to effectively protect my organization that I am accountable for, I, I need to be a aware of all that stuff. I need to con constantly develop myself. And it takes a lot of work. And and Ryan, you said this a little while ago as well, and I want to echo it because it's so important. And I saw Dave Kennedy put this on Twitter earlier this morning. You're never going to learn everything. No one, you have, like, so someone like a, 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 a gray beard like myself, right? I got to be humble, right? Everyone's got to be humble because the, I, you, no one's going to know everything. No one's going to know it all. No one's going to be great at everything. I barely understand cloud. I definitely can't uh, pop a box like Ryan can, right? And Ryan's got... You know, uh, I've got 17 years. Ryan's got 18 months, right? Ryan's better at popping boxes than me. True story, right? Mm -hmm. Fact. So, yeah. so understand that you're not going to get it all and just incrementally improve every day. 1%. Just do one thing a day. And I guarantee you, you'll look back in 18 months like Ryan and you'll be like, oh, wow. I think that's, look. I think that's a key too. Like that's what I found really, even though I was putting so many hours in, um, I was regimented in how I did it. Like there was, like I would have three hours here, and it was the same time every day. And mm -hmm. so having a that, it, just putting those, even if it's just you did, just did an hour or two hours a night, two hours a night, that's ten hours, a, like, and you only did it on weekdays. It's ten hours a week of study. Like that's, it's pretty solid. Like you can you can make serious progress with that in, in a relatively short amount of time. Like, yeah, absolutely. And, and it's just like, you know, eating a sandwich one bite at a time or eating an elephant. I, although I don't know yeah. anyone that eats elephants. I don't know where that phrase came from. But... Very tasty, very tasty. <laughs> um, um, what was I going to say? Uh, and don't be afraid to ask questions. Like that's the, like, uh, I guess it's the joy of like internet communication. You can hide behind, you know, just text and typing, like ask questions. Like there is no, there's no stupid questions really. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, very much. <laughs> <laughs> and I would say if you encounter someone that's giving you a hard time because of your question, that person is toxic and you should probably excommunicate yeah. them. <laughs> it, there's always going to be people like that though. You've got to think about their motivations. Or well, actually don't even think about them at all. It's probably the best bet. Yeah. Know? Yeah. So right. We're coming up on an hour here. This has been great engagement with the community. Uh, love Ryan's story. I love your tips on coming in from an unconventional background. What, what type of uh, projects are you working on right now, Ryan, um, that people at, might be looking for? Uh, at the moment, there's the the, uh, the one-year anniversary edition of the Haunted Hacker magazine. Uh, that's, <laughs> I'm pretty excited about that. Um, I've been doing a lot of work on RF things. Uh, well, I put a video up recently about jamming Wi-Fi with death metal. So I've, I've, I've got a video series that I'm kind of putting together with um, a mate of mine. And, yeah, we're just having a bit of fun with uh, – transmitters and uh, hack RF and just interesting things you can do um, just around the house, like lo-fi lo stuff, like stuff that people can actually like 
replicate at home if they wish. So, yeah. Right, Wi-Fi, um, RF is fascinating, man. Like it's, it's so good. I love it. Thank you, yeah. Mike. I appreciate, appreciate you putting me onto that. Yeah, that, that's interesting. So, uh, you know, from my, from my perspective, wireless hacking um, is, is like if you're just using a couple tools to like de-auth a, a node or something like that, that's one thing. But like real RF hacking, that's like a totally specific, that's almost as niche as like OTICS security, in my opinion, because you get really into like, um, like radio engineering and where the, where the radio spectrum, not the spectrum, but the, the, the actual cloud that the radio is <coughs> broadcasting and stuff like that. It's nuts, man. Antennas. I, I can't believe how complicated antennas are. Like so many different kinds. It's man, I love it. So good. But yeah. um, what else am I doing? Um, got the magazine. Uh, I think well, that's about it. Um, at this stage. Um, yeah, that's uh, just building so the community and 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 uh, uh, spreading the haunted hacker brand, getting more people in involved with it. Um. Yeah, just trying to, I guess, give back because, man, I've I've lucked out so hard. I've met some great people, and it's through those people that I've progressed so, so fast, I guess. And I just want to pay that pay that forward, like to anyone that I can. So, yeah, yeah. and the haunted hacker. So, can you like, you know, I, I I feign ignorance here, or maybe that's not right. I am ignorant, I guess. Um, <laughs> I don't know. So Haunted Hacker, it's a magazine, it's a podcast, it's a Discord server, it's it's a community. Like what what exactly is it? Is it a collective? What what is it? It's um basically it's the brainchild of the two mics, um, um Mike Jones and and Mike L. Uh and it's just it just started over, I think, some some bourbons and but um they should start a podcast. And then from the podcast came the, the Discord, and then from the Discord. And the magazine and and uh, the sky's the limit basically um yeah it's just i don't know it's like i said before it's like a it's like an incubator for for yeah there we go it's a collective for yeah i know it's smart smart interested curious people um like we've got people from like 11 years old up to like 60 years old in there maybe even older um, is it is it and, for offensive security only no, it's for everything. Absolutely everything. Every okay. facet of Skyby you could think of is in, in this channel. We've got oh, right. people from o OT, GRC, we've got networking guys. We've got young kids who are just starting out. We've got old kids who are just starting out. We've got Australians even. Um, it's it's amazing, an amazing resource. Everyone should check it out. I love it. Well, if uh, if it's all inclusive, you know, it, Mike and I have talked a little bit. Ryan and I have talked a little bit, you know, came on the show. But now I'm going to get on the Discord server and I'd like to become a part of the hacker ha haunted hacker community and you collective. You'd be most welcome, my friend. You would be yeah, most welcome. It sounds like a fit. It sounds like something I'd be totally into. Uh, so look for look for a plus one uh, pretty soon, like later today, <laughs> basically. All right. All right. So anything else you want to part with before we say goodbye to our friends and uh, end the stream? Um, basically, I just want to give a big shout out to my boss, uh, Dave, for basically giving me a chance and, you know, taking a risk on a real, real green Australian and you know, teaching me so much, so much in such a short time. And to Mike for like just inspiring me and I guess giving me a voice. Like I couldn't have imagined myself doing this a year ago. Like this is this is bananas, man. This is this is nuts. Like but anyway, and no, thank, no. You, thank you for having me on the show, man. Like, blew my mind. Oh well, uh, yeah, and my pleasure. It's 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 easy having great people come <laughs> on and talk about their experience and really promote, um, you know, just just the community in general. I I learned through Simply Cyber not too long ago that uh, you know, it, it in order to amplify the knowledge share and make it really resonate, um it's better to have other people bring their perspective, their stories, their journey yeah. and share it with the community. Uh, because as much as I talk, uh, you know, people can, can not want to hear me talk for a little bit. Right. So, but you know, it's all good. <laughs> so thank you for being on here. Thank you everybody not for problem, joining us today. Uh, this is Ryan Williams, a uh, hacker, professional hacker, and uh, <laughs> go check out the haunted hacker um, discord server. Check out the community. I'm going to be there pretty soon. I look forward to connecting with you. Um, be good, everybody. Stay secure, and we'll catch you next time. Thank you, mate.